how did you get on this road to health? Well, it kind of goes back a long way, actually. I was born at seven months. My mum was prim, uh, you know, prim, and I came out at seven months. I was very unwell. I ended up with asthma and with hay fever and allergies, and I, every cold and flu and bug that happened, I was the sick kid, you know. Yeah. I ended up with weight problems, bad skin and acne, uh, digestion issues. You know, I was really, really unwell. Yeah. And I ended up on 16 shots of Ventolin every day oh for 20 God. years. I was on Intel Prevention, steroid injections. So I was really, really unwell. And so then I got to the age of 20 or so, yeah. and I realised that I couldn't be helped. I was told I was incurable, nothing can be done. Take the drugs, son. So I thought, well, I'll start looking at diet and lifestyle, and I had no idea. I mean, this was in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what to do. Yeah. So I started investigating fasting and uh, diet and lifestyle and centenarians, which are these incredible groups of people all over the world that live into their 100s uh -huh. in better health than we are in our 70s, yeah. without drugs or disease. You know, what, what are they doing? So I started investigating that. I started doing it myself. And after five years, I cured myself of everything. And now, almost 25 years later, I haven't had a bug, a cold, a flu, a virus, no drugs, nothing for 25 years. I never get sick. I'm never unwell. Wow. I'm in better shape now, almost 50, than I was in my 20s or 30s. So You're almost 50? Yes. And, yeah, my adult kids are in great shape. I've got a whole bunch of kids. I'm about to be a granddad, actually. Oh, my God. So a God. little grandkid. Yeah, Is this it's the very youngest looking granddad you know? you've ever seen? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's amazing. You know, so now, now I teach it. Yeah. I basically teach what I learned. And, and people basically come to me and say, look, what did you do yeah. to get well? And what is your secret and rah, rah, rah. So, okay, so let yeah. me ask you, what did you do to get well and what is your secret? <laughs> <laughs> well, goodness me, how long have we got? <laughs> well, I, I was lucky I had an amazing mentor, a 104-year-old grandmother, who back in 1930, at the age of 23, decided to stop eating all crap foods and rubbish and, and animal foods and become a strict vegetarian. And she was amazing. And uh, she lived for another 81 years without drugs or disease. And, of course, she was being told regularly that, you know, well, what are you doing? You might get sick. And she goes, no, I'm good, I'm good. And she carried on. And, of course, all the experts around her died, and she carried on. And, you know, it's an amazing story. You know, she got Goes through all these doctors. Yeah, yeah, she went through all these people. And, you know, she was amazing. So she was a real mentor. Yeah. Um, and just really looking at what is it that human beings do that work, yeah. you know, that works for humans, and what is it that we do that makes us sick. And when you really start to look at these cultures, the Okinawa culture, the Nagano, Vilcabamba, Ibkazia, Loma Linda, you know, there's different cultures around the world. And when you really start to look at what they do, it's very fundamentally the same. There's 10 or 20 different things that they do that kind of cross over all the different boundaries of humanity. You know, they have a, they have a culture, you know, they have some kind of faith or discipline. They eat a plant-based diet, so mostly plants, whole foods, you know, low levels of meat. They have a low alcohol. They don't smoke. You know, they, they get enough sleep, that kind of thing. So there's some fundamental truths about what they do. And what I now do is I teach that to people and I teach about what I did and how I got well and how I stay well. Yeah. And fasting is another one, you know, eating less and how is it to not eat for a day and what does that mean? So yeah. it's amazing. I, I find myself here without any realisation of how I got here, you know? It's, <laughs> real, it's great. It's fabulous, though. So, so lots of fun. A lot of people would say, well, fasting, what, what? You don't eat for a day? Are you crazy? Yeah, yeah, I discovered that in the 1980s and it was one of the first things I did because where your health comes from is your gut. It's your bowel and digestive system. This is everything. It's 90% of your immune system, which keeps you well. It's why I never get sick, because I take care of my gut. And your gut is basically where your microbes live and your bacteria. Yeah. And if you've got healthy bacteria, it's essentially a genetic material, bacterial kind of mixture, and your genetic expression happens there. And without getting too technical, yeah. what it means is what you eat fuels that garden and it feeds out how your genetics express. So whether you get sick or whether you get well. And we can look at the studies of identical twins, and there's, there's so many studies done of identical twins. They're the same genetics, but one lives 30 years longer. But they're exactly the same, 23,688 genes. And when you look at that and you go, hmm, so they're the same genes, but one is outliving the other by 30 years with no drugs or disease. Yeah. How does that work? And you realise it's all diet and lifestyle. And so it's a fascinating thing. Fasting is one of those things where we've always had to fast, because throughout history there wasn't always a countdown or a, a supermarket or a BP or a fridge. And so before that was there, you know, we didn't have a choice. You, you basically ran out of food. You either died or you fasted. So we're actually built for fasting. What we're not built for is overeating. There's these key things that we can learn, and one of them is fasting again. And, you know, every one pound of body fat you have is 3,500 calories of fuel. So for most people, if you're carrying 10 pounds of body fat, you can stop eating for 20 days if you want it. And I've fasted 33 days at a time. I was on tour a couple of years ago, fasted for 33 days. While I was on tour, travelling around the world, presenting, 
complete, you'd never know. I occur just the same as this. So once you start to master fasting over time, and it's something that does take time, it takes a bit of practice, but once you get it, it's incredibly freeing because yeah. you're kind of separated from the tyranny of food. And, you know, we've got this addictive food everywhere now, yeah. obesogenic environment where everyone's overeating and the wrong kind of food. Yeah. So we're in a real pickle in terms of the health of the nation. We're a real pickle. I feel really guilty now. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. You can do something about it. The good thing is it's not your genetics. You know, 97% yes, like bowel yeah. cancer. We've got the number one rates on planet Earth. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. Three to four times more people die every day than on the road of bowel cancer. And it's rotting to death. I've seen people do it. It's horrible. Yeah. And when you look at that and you go, well, hang on, 97% of that bowel cancer is preventable. World Health Organization tells us this. So 97 out of every 100 people who rot to death, they don't have to. And yet we kind of stand by and let it happen. Yeah. It's disgraceful. So there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work. But you can turn your health around really quickly. So when you were on the path to turning your health around, yeah. what were the first simple things that you did? Ah, okay, changed what I ate in terms of my breakfast, lunch and dinner. So right. the first thing is, started to get present to what I'm eating. Now yeah. what is it that I'm putting in my mouth? I used to think that, you know, fried eggs and, and you know, uh, and meat and, and, and hamburgers and pizzas and whatever and cola mm, drinks. and yum. Yeah, I used to think that was <laughs> a standard diet, you know, because this was the 1980s when I started looking at this and there wasn't the internet, there wasn't, you couldn't just Google stuff and learn. I literally had to try, I had to send for books from America and I had to photocopy things and you know, the first thing I changed was what I ate and that started to change my bowel motions. Yeah. And it was only when that started to happen I started to realise that I was constipated chronically. Most people are, but we don't like to talk about it. Oh, no. can we just talk about it really quickly, okay. quietly? Yeah. What are you supposed to be doing in the bowel department? In the bowel department, mm -hmm. three times a day. What? No pain, no strain, no grunt. Three times right? a day? Three, three times, times a day. Times a day. Yeah, so it should be just literally, oh, I feel like going, go to the toilet. Oh, I've finished. It should be that kind of relationship. <laughs> you know, it shouldn't be the <laughs> kind of straining that a lot of people have. You know, and it's because we're eating and it's those four things. We have a meat heavy, sugar rich, highly processed, yeah. low fiber diet. And it's the fiber that cleans out your digestive system and on the way cleans the fat from the liver, which is good for the skin, of course, to have good skin, you need you a healthy have good liver. Skin. Thank you. Well, I keep my liver clean, which yeah. is really important. And I used to have a lot of skin problems. I mean, for years, I had skin problems. And then that fibre works through the bowel, and it's the lack of fibre that's the crucial part with the bowel. And, you know, of course, we have chronic constipation, and we have the number one bowel rates, bowel cancer rates in the world. Is yeah. there a connection? Of course there is. Yeah. You know, if, you, if, if this part of the body is not cleaning and working well, you're in trouble. Mm. So what um, would your take-home tips be for someone who goes, oh, I really, I get it, I know it's... But it seems so hard. It does seem hard, doesn't it? Yeah, so take home tips. Number one would be um, start to get present to what you eat for a start, particularly in the evening, because a lot of people get through the day and it's basically, you know, crawling through the day until they get to 10 o'clock and they can eat their coffee and when they have their coffee, everything's going really well when I'm having my coffee. You know, that's just caffeine addiction, you know. Yeah. And then they go from there to sugar sweet, sugar sweet, sugar sweet, stay up late, you know, alcohol, fall asleep and repeat. Mm. You know, it's just, just the same old cycle, you know. <laughs> and, it, and, and you've got to intervene. So the first step, you know, and I teach this, this is what I do, this is what I teach people how to do. So the first step is to be aware of what you're doing and start to make small changes. Breakfast is the first thing. We've got a wonderful free muesli recipe on our website you can download for nothing. Yeah. And that'll give you good high fibre, good protein, good pre-digested soaked superfoods, you know. So there's a lot of things you can do easily. Brilliant. Hey, mm. thanks for all those tips. Number one, go get your breakfast, go to the website, check out the recipe. Jason, thank you so much for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me.